and Buster. It's Buster and Rosie time. It's Buster and Rosie time. It's Buster and Rosie time. It's so nice to have you all back. Yeah, we're back in our room. And look, Linda's got my snowman. And she's got my, well, she already had my Christmas tree. Get so excited you get so shrill. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh well, lots of us do that. I might get a little higher when I'm excited. You just did. Oh, whoops, you see? I'm so glad that Glinda's decorating our houses. Me too. This is our first Christmas. I wouldn't even know how. Me either. But she's been telling stories and telling us all about what they do for decorating. I know, and how they celebrate. I can't wait for my first turkey leg bone. Me either. That sounds so good and yummy. Lorna says we can't have one. What? Why? She said she'll give us turkey treats, though. She says the bones are not good for dogs because they can do something bad to their tummies. Guess what? What? I'm going to help me make something for you. Oh, cool, cool. She helped me make something for you, too. An early Christmas present. Early? You want to do it early? Well, yeah. This will be the first one. And then we'll have some others later on. Oh, kind of like, well, not really the 12 days. It's more than 12 days till Christmas. Well, yeah, oh, we don't have to do the 12 days. We don't have to do them every day. We can just give them here and there. Just to keep it exciting. Oh, that sounds fun. Shall we go get it? Oh, go get the one I got for you. going to read, guys. More of the search. Okay. We left Sheridan sitting, eating breakfast with the cook and the waitress who calls herself service at the Kitten Cafe. And they had just asked her to give her, to give, tell them about herself. She basically gave a job description. And they said, no, no, no. You need to tell about who you are. Amazon and other online stores in ebook form. Jolly Man looked straight into Sheridan's eyes. She felt as if he was searching inside her brain with his stare. His hazel eyes looked for the essence of Sheridan as if it were a treasure. Sheridan took a deep cleansing breath and blew it out. Okay, she looked down at the tea in her cup that shimmered with a surprising reflection of part of her face. I was married before I went to Egypt. I met Mark at a lecture he was giving in Lincoln about his archaeological missions in Egypt. He'd been following the trail of the Holy Family took on their way to Egypt after King Herod's decree to kill all young Hebrew boys. 
I fell in love with Mark while I was sitting there in the chairs. Sheridan was back in the time and place as service and cook seemed to fade. He was so driven to find physical proof that Jesus traveled through that path in Egypt. That's what he did. It was as if his life wasn't going to be complete until he found that proof. It was his passion and sincerity that touched me that day. Sheridan chuckled. His good looks didn't hurt either. He was handsome. Sheridan sighed deeply. God blessed that man with a physique and face that made a girl's heart drum in her ears. It did mine. What I didn't know was that he was casting glances at me. He said later he looked at me and thought I was someone he wanted to get to know. Fast. He claimed he was in a hurry to court me and get me back to Egypt as his wife. She took a deep breath. Go on, what about Egypt? Service's remark made Sheridan jump. Phew, I kind of got lost in my story. We noticed, her companions chimed in unison. Sheridan looked at them, and they were smiling like a couple of children. Okay, okay, she teased. We fell in love. Less than a year later, we were married and back in Egypt, where he'd been digging. I worked with the people of the Bedouin tribe we lived with. They are so open to everyone. They don't even worry about who you are. The Bedouin people accept everyone with unbelievable hospitality. Sheridan smiled back at cook and service, lowering her voice as if telling a secret. There was an elderly woman there who took us in as if we were her own children. She was the oldest woman of the camp and all the other women went to her for advice on everything from bread recipes to how to pleasure their husbands in bed. Sheridan snickered. She was so sweet. Her name was Sarai. Oops, is Sarai. She's still there and very much alive. Anyway, we became best friends. She practically moved into our tents when we found out I was expecting a baby. Sheridan's face dropped as she remembered the pain later when she found out she'd lost the baby. The tribe was Jewish. She looked up at her audience. You remember the lost tribes of Israel? Well, they aren't lost. Not to the Jews, anyway. But the Levites mingled with the other tribes. The family of Levites that composed the nomadic tribes we followed stretched from modern Israel throughout Egypt. God gave them the duty of watching after artifacts that he was afraid would become idols. God entrusted them with the artifacts such as the staff of Moses. Sheridan snickered to herself. Many people, including ministers, don't think about the fact that the book of James in the Bible is a letter to all the tribes of Israel. The author wrote those letters long after the tribes were supposedly lost. Isn't it funny that we consider them lost just because we can't track them? Ah, uh, well, anyway, that's what Mark was looking for. He didn't want to expose the artifacts they protected. He just wanted proof the Holy Family had been there. It turns out that when they left Israel, they were assisted by these Levite nomads who guided them from one family group to the next. Mark was already followed that route and was in Egypt on the final leg of his search. Sheridan took a deep breath. 
I didn't tell you he was an archaeologist, did I? Sure you did. Or at least alluded to it. You loved him very much, didn't you? Service asked softly. Yes. I think he will always be the love of my life. That's why Michael has never asked me to marry him, I think. Michael? Who is he? And that's where we will leave off tonight. Why is she talking about Michael when she's married to Mark? Don't you remember, Rosie? She talked at the very beginning of the book about being a widow. Something happened to Mark. Oh, I wonder if we'll find out what. Oh, sometime. Anyway, it's been a fun night. Yes, it has. We got to exchange candy, Kate. That was so funny. Glenda got us on that one. Yes, I did. I got you both. <laughs> but now you each have a candy cane to put on your dog houses. Where? Well, on the other side. On one of the sides. Oh, yeah. Those plain white paper sides that she put on. We still need to put something on there. I forgot about it. I got so excited about the tree and Buster Snowman and all the stockings. Yeah, those were fun. Well, guys, it's time to say good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Would you like to do your song? Can we? Oh, sure. Good night, good night, don't let the bugs bite. Good night, good night, sleep till the daylight. Good night, good night, be kind to each other. Good night, good night, tell someone you love them. Don't forget to smile and wave. And be sure to give us a thumbs up for a like. And subscribe and click that notification bell. Yeah, and talk to each other oh, and us down in the comments. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.